Hello my fellow mutants, I'm King Link and we're reviewing Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. This is the second of the Humble Monthly Bundle for April 2019. We've already covered Northgard and we will review Absolver next, but for now, let's talk about Mutant Year Zero. Now to start with, I'm going to be calling out the fact that this is based on a tabletop role-playing game with its name as Mutant Colon Year Zero. I think it's important to mention that because some of the design decisions in the video game had to be based on the board game. And while I don't think it would excuse problems here, it is important to at least understand why the game was made in this way. Mutant Year Zero though looks good. As you see me play, I'm sure you'll see a number of rather detailed maps with stuff to find. And our characters are decently detailed. Though what's odd is, the human character might be less detailed than the mutants. The duck and the boar named Ducks and Boarmen look good, but okay, they have dumb names. The maps here are pretty detailed, like I said, and that's a good sign. It helps the game quite a bit because much of the game is based on exploration and scavenging rather than combat itself. Now, a big negative with the graphics, though, is that there's not a lot of variety in the enemies. There's humans, humanoid robots, regular robots, and wolves. Now, half of the game I thought it was okay, but at the second half, you know, I just started feeling it was excessive. There was nothing new to really find. Mutant Year Zero's story is a bit slow to start, but after about 30 minutes, as you can see in the preview down in the description, you'll reach the arc, and the game starts talking about the backstory of the area. Bad stuff has happened, humanity is stuck in the arc. Now, I don't want to go too far into the story, but I'll say that the more I think about it, the more I like it. There's a lot of levels to it and some interesting terminology, especially once you know the entire story. Sadly, a lot of that is spoilers and it's delivered at the end of the game. Much of the game focuses more on the we don't understand common things jokes, you know? Such as the comments about trains or playgrounds or really anything that we would think is commonplace. You know, it's a good joke the first time they do it about the boombox, but god, Mutant Year Zero should build a house there because that's where most of the story lives. There are good parts here though. The artifacts do have some funny jokes, but the notes are what really fills in the backstory of the game and makes the game's theme work. I could talk about it, but again, it's spoilish, though sadly those notes are missable, you need a hunt for them. What allows the story to work though is that there's two distinct parts of the Mutant Year Zero. There's of course the tactical, strategic gameplay like XCOM that a lot of people will talk about, and that does exist, but there's also a good exploration part like I keep saying. The player is able to move freely around the map, and his mutants will be scavenging for supplies, and that's their stated goal, at least that's the reason why they left the Ark. And what that means is they have to find scrap piles, items, and weapon parts to bring it back to the base. Yeah, yeah. The player then can upgrade their equipment or buy new pieces. There's even chests in the world with equipment, and those are particularly important to find. In addition, that exploration will allow you to monitor enemies, position your characters, enter battle. That's particularly useful if an enemy walks away from his group. Players can move in and ambush them, and will have to often. The battle system of Mutant Year Zero is a tactical, strategic... Okay, it's XCOM. It's really just XCOM. But that's not an issue. XCOM is popular for a number of reasons, and their tactical fighting system is one of the biggest. Each character gets two action points to use, and can use them to move, attack, and use abilities, reload, and more. Mutant Year Zero differentiates itself from XCOM and others by what it expects the player to do. The game heavily emphasizes stealth. This is more than just knowing when to strike, but more focused on killing targets in a single turn, or stunning them, or pulling them away from their friends. If you fail, the enemy will alert their friends, but if you succeed, your team will exit combat after taking a single target out, allowing them to pick off the enemies one at a time. Players can also skip encounters, bypassing most enemies if they aren't seen. It's not a bad choice, especially when you can skip most bosses or major enemies, but the game also heavily emphasizes side paths and you'll need to kill at least some enemies for those valuable levels. At least that's how I understood Mutant Year Zero. In practice, well, there's some design flaws here. How you build your character and what difficulty you're on will have a big bearing on the game. Normal difficulty allows your health and more importantly your skills to recharge after every battle. It allows you to have a fresh tactical approach each combat and that works. 
Any other difficulty will require recharging skills, which happens after a certain amount of kills, usually three. But stealth here isn't just important, it's almost required. So you have to reach for skills that assist with that. You'll need Hog Rush, MP Blast, Twitch Shot, and Mind Control. I'm sure some people have beaten it without these exact skills, but they're extremely valuable and many other abilities don't seem to be as important. Since the skills burn out, you'll also need to use the abilities sparingly. In addition, you can upgrade weapons, but with all this information, you should realize you need to upgrade your stealth weapons before almost anything else, as the small extra points of damage will become essential before long. Hit chances as well are a bit odd. There's only 25, 50, 75, and 100 percent, and that's probably based off the board game, but honestly I like a more uh, variable value because it feels more realistic. But save scumming also can work here. Reloading a save game gives you the same random number, but if you move closer to a target you get a higher chance, or you can reorder how you use your shots and abilities to give you a better chance of triggering everything. Now, stealth is critical because your team will easily be overwhelmed, but even when you break stealth, there's certain strategies that are, well, critical. Taking out a shaman in one turn is mandatory, otherwise they might summon three more enemies, and it's very easy to be overwhelmed with just three enemies on the screens, but having three additional enemies almost ruins every plan. There's other tricks, and maybe there are a few other ways to play. I'm sure someone out there has tried a no stealth run, but I don't really see it. There's limited items, so you can use grenades, but stealth will almost definitely have to be used by most players. The reason I keep stressing this is that stealth requires skills after a while, and if you accidentally use too many skills or haven't bought the right ones, you might get stuck into situations where your character doesn't have a way to take out a single enemy, and that can ruin a run. Character levels themselves don't directly enhance the character's stats, or affect damage or, or accuracy from what I've seen. They're just points to unlock mutator abilities. It's a disconnect because health points are what really matters to the enemy, and it becomes a question for how fast you can remove the target's 14 health points or such. Mutant Year Zero has a few other tricks, such as armor which does a flat reduction to any damage taken. So a 10 point attack suddenly becomes a 6 point attack with 4 points of armor added in between. There's no way to remove the armor so it becomes a game of how long can you stun the enemy or how much damage you can do very quickly. Now most of this is design choices and I think a heavy focus on stealth is probably a bad thing as it means there's really only a couple of play styles that work but okay that's what the devs wanted. There's two major problems with Mutant Year Zero as a game though. The first is, it's kind of short. There's not a ton of levels, and you'll spend a decent amount of your time backtracking to get a few more experience levels or find an item you missed. I spent maybe 12 to maybe 14 hours with the game, and for any other tactical game that would be on the very light end. The bigger problem for me though is there's really no replay unless you want to play on harder difficulties. But the game itself doesn't change. Normal makes it very easy, but once you change to a setting that doesn't recharge your skill immediately, hard, very hard, and even Iron Man are all about the same difficulty level. The maps or levels don't change at all, and all the enemies you fight are exactly the same in the same layout. So you'll know where to find better items, but more importantly, you'll fight the exact same encounters the second time. Now the devs have released Stalker Trials, which is a leaderboard style of tracking progress on a side game, but it's not really part of the main story. Mutant Year Zero has a number of issues. I think I brought most of them up. It has good humor though, decent gameplay, and I do have to admit the first half of the game was good, while I understood its particular systems. The problem is, once you understand how important stealth is, it just becomes more of a grind. I don't hate Mutant Year Zero, let me be clear about that, but I also wish it allowed variety in its gameplay. Mutant Year Zero makes me want a sequel, because I like the idea of this a lot. The stealth can be fun, but I wanted more than just stealth. A randomized experience would be good, rather than a stock set of levels that feel like there's only one way works. The Mutant Year Zero way. I give Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden a 3 out of 5. It's really close to becoming something very unique, but it just becomes a harder version of XCOM or a really hard version of Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. That's not bad, but both of these games will occupy you far longer than Mutant Year Zero, and I think Mutant Year Zero could have been a lot better. 
That's Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden. Coming up next, we have the last game for our humble monthly bundle, Absolver. Is it Dark Souls? Eh, maybe. If you like this review or you want to see that one, consider subscribing and joining the Hyrulean Knights. We're on our way to 300 subscribers and I'm glad to welcome each of you to the table. Ring the bell for notifications so you can keep current. Until next time, I'm King Link and thank you for watching.